the interpretation of tongues, KT, Arad, interpretation of language. Everything has a language. Ro, everything is speaking. Roko, but God is giving interpretation right now. There's interpretation coming to the, the stuff that's been happening in your life, the stuff that's been happening all around you. No Rokoske. God's causing stuff in us to bow right now before the king. The king is in, there's an inspection happening right now. The king is inspecting stuff on the inside of us. Glory to God. And we're letting him in every room. We, an evaluation period is taking place right now in the name of the Lord. I'm interpreting this moment for you. God says there's an evaluation happening. He's like he's got a white glove test. He's going through every area of your life because after this here, he's releasing you into something very powerful. So this is quality control. There's a moment where God says, I'm going to evaluate you. And this is the final test, quality control, before I release you into that next big thing that has been prophesied over your life. He brought you here this morning for this purpose. In the name of the Lord, don't be afraid of an auditor. Don't be afraid of an evaluation. Don't be afraid of a final exam. They're coming in to make sure everything is set the way it was supposed to be set before you can be released into something very, very powerful. I declare that moment right here. Why don't you say, why don't you have an encounter with that moment in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He, he is Lord. He has risen from the dead. Just a few bars, and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. One more time, everybody. He is Lord. He is Lord. He, he has, he has risen. risen from the dead. And he I said just one time, but one more time. He is Lord. I want you to believe him for his lordship to rule in you. Every 
We exalt you. We exalt you. Just my Lord, I exalt this Lord. With a loud voice, lift up your voice and say, Ephesians chapter 3 on the screen. Ephesians chapter 3. As we worship the Lord, we're having an encounter this morning. And we've got a few kinds of encounters we're going to have. But we need to see Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7 on the screen. Glory to his name. We start doing encounters because the Lord says, don't just preach about me, let the people experience me. This church started really growing when we start doing encounters, allowing people to experience God for themselves. We've heard a lot, but can we experience what we've heard? This is the Apostle Paul. He said, whereof I was made a minister. We talked about this on Thursday night. Whereof I was made a minister according to, keep playing softly, according to the gift of grace, of the grace of God given unto me, notice the next word, by the what? Effectual working of his power. Go back, please. Effectual working of his power is what I want you to see. Effectual working of his power. That word working there in the Greek, we get our English word energy from. God has, God is energy. Say it with me. God is energy. 
And when God's energy is in the room, it makes things work. It makes things work. And you're gonna have an encounter with God's energy in just a few moments, and it's gonna cause stuff in your life that's not working to begin to work. Glory to God. Did you hear what I just said? You're gonna have an encounter with the energy of God. And I'm gonna put a name on the energy in just a moment, but right there, it's just very generic. It just says the energy. But I want you to know the energy of God, I'm going to tell you right now, is the love of God. The energy of God is the love of God. The Bible says God will never forget your labor of love. The Bible even says faith worketh by love. Faith won't work unless there's some real love behind it. Love is the motivation. Love is the energy that causes everything to move. Paul said, I was made a minister from love. God loved him into servanthood. It was God's love that was on Paul that made him serve in the way that he served. How many want to encounter with this kind of energy that will motivate you? Nando rekeshke, hikanta rabababosa. This kind of energy that will come upon you and cause you to serve, cause you to submit. He'll love you into submission. He'll love you into service. He'll love you into saying yes to his will and to his way. Not force you, but love you. He's getting ready to capture somebody's heart in here in a way that has never been captured before. Everything works by love skip down to verse number 14 let's see what that says read he says for this cause i bow my knee to the father of our lord jesus christ read next verse next verse of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Come on, keep moving. I need you to move faster. That he would grant unto, he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be what? Strengthened with might by his spirit. Where? In the inner man. That's what's going to happen in just a moment. Come on, next. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being what? Rooted and grounded where? Because of the love there, the energy is there. It's going to make all of this happen. Come on. May be able to comprehend with the saints, with, with all the saints, what is the what? The breath of love. Did, watch me, watch me, watch me. The breath of love deals with the ability to accommodate people. To accommodate the breath. How many people can I get in my circle and love? Depends on how much energy is working on you. The length of love. How long will I walk with them? Some people will go part of the way and they'll cut you off. Some people you'll get on their nerves after you have too many problems. But love will cause you to be able to go the distance. If we're going to save a generation, we're going to have to go the distance with them. I said, are we really going to save a generation? We're going to have to go the distance with some people. But it's going to take the love of God to constrain us. That same love that made us a servant is the love that will move on us to save a generation. It's love. Not only the length, but also the depth. It's the love that will make us reach down and pull people up. And the height. It's the love that will cause us to lift people even above ourselves. We have to be rooted and grounded in what? That's what you're getting ready to have an encounter with this morning. And it's going to cause your faith to work. It's going to cause your gifts to work. The Bible gives a number of things that only work when there's the energy of love. Next verse. And, and to know the what? The love of Christ. We, we've, got a, we've got churches filled of gifted people whose gifts don't work because the lack of, in the last days, the love of many shall wax. People are selfish. Many people are into themselves. 
But when we shift back over to where God originally intended for us to be, we're going to see an explosion in the movement of God in our life. How will we save a generation? It's by love, ladies and gentlemen. Brian posed the question, how do you win the next generation? The same thing that won the previous generation. It's the love of God and spoken with the truth of God that wins any generation. No one's an exception to the rule. Love cannot be resisted. Not the real love of God. And to know the love of Christ was what? Passes knowledge. There is no knowledge beyond this. That ye might be filled with, here it is, all the fullness of God. Are you coming into an alignment with this? Who wants an encounter with this kind of love? This will win your, your wayward child back. It's love that's going to do it. We said love lifted me when nothing else could help. Next verse. Come on, next verse. Did you know love changes the narrative? A narrative is a story that people put around the thing to shape it a certain way. But when you start laboring in love, and I'm sharing this so we can all go back to our home and continue our labor of love. When you labor in love, you'll change the narrative. You'll reshape society. Whatever God wants to do and you start working it in love, it'll activate all of your gifts and things will happen. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundant above all we can. But notice here it is, according to what? And that same word is there, that worketh. That it's the energy of God. If the energy or the love of God is not working, there is no exceeding, there is no abundantly, there is no above. But where love is, the fullness of God will fill that place. And I'm suggesting to you that the love has waxed cold in most churches, replaced with self-interest. From the top to the bottom, people are self-contained and are concerned about themselves. Perfect love cast out all fear. This is how we know we pass from death to life because we love the brethren. You owe your brother some love. Owe no man anything but to love them. Oh. There's a change getting ready to happen right now. Look at somebody and say, I owe you some love. I owe you. It's a debt. Some of y'all owe me some love. Pay up. <laughs> I'm serious. Some of y'all owe people love. You won't show up because it's not convenient to you. Well, what about love? What happened to the love of God? Tia Rabasho. Can we repent for not loving the way Christ told us to love. I said, can we repent from not allowing the love of God to flow through us the way God intended for this love to flow? He says, I'll do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. And of course, a selfish mind will interpret that to just get something for themselves. That's not what he was talking about. He says, you got to be rooted and grounded in love for that energy to even be working inside of you. And then you'll go beyond what uh, God, what, what you thought or what you prayed for or what you asked for. God has brought you here this morning to have an encounter with his love, which is the energy of God that'll make you a minister. Glory to God, a quality minister, and it also will work through you and activate every one of your gifts. If you don't want to just have a gift that's lazy, a gift that won't work, a gift that won't move, when I get up before people, before I think about what I want to say, I think about do I love these people or not? 
and when I recognize that I love the people I'm talking to then stuff starts happening on the inside of me then the Christ will rise up and help somebody inside of me I'm not here trying to see how well I'm gonna do I'm trying to see what God wants to do through your life I break the power of selfishness in the name of Jesus Christ right now somebody shout I renounce selfishness say I renounce selfishness say I renounce selfishness in the name of the Lord say selfishness is, re is rooted in fear so I renounce fear in, in the name of Jesus Christ I denounce it and I renounce it to renounce means to sever the tie legally to denounce means to publicly publicly display my hatred of it so I want you to renounce it and I want you to denounce it in the name of the Lord right now One more thing, I want you to renounce lust too. You got to renounce lust because lust says I need something. Lust, I'm not talking about sexual lust, just lust says I need something because I feel like I don't have uh, my sufficiency. When you have love, you have it all. Are you hearing me? When you have the love of God, you got everything you need. Say, I renounce the spirit of lust. I reject the spirit of lust. In the name of Jesus Christ, I denounce it and I renounce it in Jesus' name. Now clap your hands and give the Lord a praise for that. You know you got to come into an agreement with this stuff for it to happen to you. If you don't agree with it, nothing's happening. If you don't, if you don't believe it, nothing will happen. If you don't agree, nothing will happen. And if you don't celebrate, nothing will happen. Because when you believe it, you open up to it. When you agree with it, you come into an alignment. When you celebrate, you get filled with it. Now get filled with this stuff by your celebration. an alignment with this thing you gotta back what the Lord is saying to back it means I believe it I agree with it it's an acronym and I celebrate it how many are back is backing what God said right now with love so now I need you to come I need you to have encounter with love right now it's this energy that's getting ready to activate every gift inside of you now we know we can only prophesy to the proportion of faith but guess what faith won't work unless there is love So we're going to slow it down just for a moment right here. And I need you to open up to the let God love you first. Paul said, I was made a minister by the effectual working power of God. The, it was the love that caused him to let go of all that stuff. 
cause him to lose his fears and lose all that stuff that makes us selfish. Receive the love of God. Come on. That means you believe he loves you. But not just intellectually, see. Mental assent does not transform you. Believe it, agree with it, but then when you start celebrating at some point, you open yourself and it moves from your head to your heart. When you celebrate a thing, it moves from your head to your heart. That's why celebration is important. So once you get it in your head, and you agree with it in your soul, then you've got to open yourself to it. He said, be rooted and grounded in love. Then we can do exceeding abundantly. Whew. Father, we come into an alignment with your love. With the fact that you love us. And we want to experience the height of that love. How high will that love lift us? We want to experience the depth of that love. Oh God, we want to know the breadth of it. Comprehend with the saints. We want to know how many can we accommodate in our heart. How many people can we truly love? We want to know the length. How far will this love go? I declare his love in the house right now. And it's up to you to have an encounter with. Come on, believe God. God is love. When you have an encounter with his love, you're having an encounter with God. And it'll activate your life. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me.
an encounter with the love of God right now. Moria Rabagaska. Come on, have that encounter with his love. Say it again, everybody. Love lifted me. Nothing else could help. Yeah. 
say it again. dare you to get in the river come on don't spectate have an encounter with God sometimes you got to close your eyes and just jump in the river and let him bless your life he'll love you into submission he'll make you a minister he'll love you and then he'll fill you with it and all your gifts will activate I declare the activation of all the gifts of God in this house the only way the economy is going to work for everybody's gifts to be activated. I declare activation, 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 activation by love, not by lust, not by fear, not by self-interest, but the love of God constrains us in Jesus' name. I just want to be a part of the equation. I just want to be a part of the equation. Whatever he's doing in the earth, I just want to do my part. I'm willing, I'm a servant. I'll do what he tells me to do. The glory of love is in this room right now. I told you God's too big to worship. You got to worship some aspect of God. And right now, all of us are focused on the love of God. And that's what's being released in this room. Lord, let the glory of your love fill this place more and more. Baptize us with the love of God. It, on the day of Pentecost, they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. Several days later, they were baptized with boldness. Right now, we getting ready to be baptized with the love of God. Come on, be baptized, and God will give you a new tongue. That same old stale tongue, come on, let the Lord give you a new tongue. Speak in another language. God's going to shake this place with the love of God. said I'll never forget your labor of love it'll refashion the world it'll change the narrative it'll save your children but it's got to be his love somebody get rooted and grounded get rooted get rooted get rooted and grounded get rooted oh To bring encounters to your church you better hear me you can't just preach the gospel you got to demonstrate the gospel let people experience the power of the gospel and they'll come from near and they'll come from far they don't just want to lecture they want to experience God himself you need a kingdom encounter in your church in your life 
This is how I pray. I just took my prayer life and went public with it. That's all I do. I have encounters every day with God in some space. And God says, go public with what we do in private and bring the whole church into it. God said to me, the people are not coming to hear you. He said, they're coming because they want to hear from me. shall be no personality that eclipses God from his people. Come on, everybody. Lift those hands to him and worship. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. You see, I'm singing all these old songs because I want you to know we bring old and new things out. And if it's anointed, it doesn't matter if it's old or new. I'm not talking about dead stuff, living things.
my heart. enter into but time won't permit I could do this all day because there's no end to him all we do is present him and have the encounter and we start transforming we do this kind of thing at this church all the time we could be here for hours and the, the longer you go the deeper it gets the greater the glory gets and the more Jesus you see. Before Bishop Bismarck comes, so I'm cutting some of these encounters short. I have about two, three of them we're gonna go to, but we're not gonna do it now. I want Apostle Pagani to come first, and he's gonna lead us in an encounter of his choice. Then we're gonna bring Bishop Bismarck, and he's gonna share on a subject that we're gonna have an encounter with when he's done. Can you hang that long? Yeah. See, it's a fallacy to say people won't stay in church long because we have some very long services. It depends on who's there. If the Lord is there, people will stay all day. Now, if the Lord is not there, you need to end that service really quick. The Lord is not there, you probably shouldn't even have the service. And I'm not giving, making a case for long services, but I am saying when we get caught up in encounters and people stay. I have to, I've walked out before the people left. I said, I got to go home. And I just walked out just like that. And they were still in the sanctuary because God didn't leave. Apostle Pagani, come on up, please. Full core that I believe God wants to do today. He shared on the energy of God and he shared on the love of God. But there is a third final component that I hear the Lord saying is frequency. And that word frequency is not found in scripture as the word frequency is found in the word soundness. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, energy, love, but there's a third component that God wants to begin to heal, and that's your mind. He wants to begin to shift the frequency of what's going on in your mind. So I want you to put the hands on your head, and I want you to allow God to shift the frequency. Healing and health is predicated upon a frequency, the right sound. And this is why there are measures of deliverance that God said, I will sing over you songs of deliverance. Not words of deliverance, not renouncing through deliverance, but God said, I will sing over you. I will sing over you. I will give you the right song. And this is why the Apostle Paul said, "If they in all things, sing and make melody in your hearts unto the Lord. Because sometimes a word can't shift, but a song can take you there. So I want you to begin to ask God to begin to shift the frequency and the sound of your mind. And God is going to begin to begin to 
shift and move neurotransmitters there in the spirit now I'm not talking about in the natural but I am talking about in the spirit and I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to begin to shift the frequency the frequency this is why there are certain things that you tell a child sometimes you could explain something to a child and they'll forget it but if you have them sing it if you have them sing the melody then they'll begin to remember the words and this is why at the age of four we will sing to them a b c d e f g y they might not remember the word but they'll remember the song they'll remember the song and this is why God is going to begin to shift the frequency of your mind so I want you to begin to just allow God to change it and this is why this is why when they scan you in in, in the hospital they're looking for a shift in a frequency they're looking for a sound and when the sound begins to uh, share something that's a bit different then they'll begin to diagnose what's actually what's going on there so I want you to begin to raise your voice right now I want you to begin to raise your voice right now in the name of Jesus I want you to begin to raise your voice just raise your voice raise your voice shift the sound shift the frequency shift the frequency this is why God was trying to show us God was trying to show us in the book of Joshua there are certain walls that can only come down with a certain frequency take this change the frequency now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus just go there just go there just go there raise the frequency raise and shift the frequency now in the name of Jesus I'm not talking about new age but I am talking about soundness I'm talking about soundness God has given us a spirit of power love and a and a frequent a freak a, a mind that has a right frequency just go there now in the name of Jesus go there now in the name of Jesus Go there now in the name of Jesus. Ramando bose kataya mando bose. Rekanda mando no bose And even when you don't know what song and what frequency to do, God said there is a sound that the Holy Ghost will give you. The Holy Ghost will give you. Romans chapter 8. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Rekanda bose ke ana mando robose. Rekanda mando do bose ke atatalamaka. And this is why the Bible says the Holy Ghost will give you sounds, a frequency that only the Spirit understands. Only the Holy Spirit will understand it. Do it now in the name of Jesus. Rekanda do kesi. Rekanda do bonde de bose kataya. Now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus, shift that frequency now in Jesus' mighty name. Ramondo bose ke telekea. Rekanda na mandolo bose ke ata. Rekanda na mandolo bose. Heramanda mandolo bose. A power, love, and a sound mind. Rekata. That's why the Bible says, be sound in your faith, the right frequency. Be sound in your words, the right frequency. Be sound in darkness. The right frequency. Rekanda bo seketea. Lekondololo bo seketea. Randa mando bo sekete. Shift that mind of yours now. Come on, Jabula. Shift that mind of yours now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, Embassy. Shift that mind of yours. In Jesus' mighty name. Remaya mando bo seketea. Lekoto kondolo bo sekete. Rekata. Why? Because as a man thinketh in his heart, as a man and think it. Change the think it now in Jesus' name. Change the frequency now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There's not much more to do but just get a sound mind. We already got power. We already got love. And now we're going to get a sound, well-disciplined frequency. Re shekanda bosai. Re kanda da da mando lo bosea. Re kete kosa. Le konda da mando lo bosea. I'm just taking you there to the right frequency. Higher now, higher. Higher now. Come on, higher, higher. That's it. Rekondo bosakata, le romo shekata. It's all about the right frequency. 
This is why the Bible says, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. When you shout, the frequency change. When you cry, the frequency change. When you sing, the frequency change. That's change the frequency. Look, this is why the Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people. Why? Because this frequency change. And when the frequency change, God is able to do something fresh and new and innovative. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout. And sometimes God will tell you to change two frequencies, clapping and shouting, clapping and shouting. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God. Double frequency, two times, creating a new sound, creating a new sound. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Yes. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. I command every demon over your mind. I speak to every mind binding spirit over your thoughts, over your mind. Go now in Jesus' mighty name. Release the people now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Come on, Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's not much more but to change the frequency. Change the frequency. Shift the sound. Do whatever you gotta do. If they gotta clap, if they gotta walk, if they gotta spin, if they gotta dance, whatever it is, change the sound. Change the sound. Change the sound. I want you to find two to three people and do something different with them. If they're gonna dance with them, if they're gonna shout with them, if they're gonna sing with them, if you're gonna help them wave their hands, do it now in the name of Jesus. Change the frequency. Go to one place to the other. Do it now in Jesus' mighty name. You gotta change it. I said you gotta change it. I said you gotta change it. 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 Change it. Change it. If you're here, walk all the way over here. Just change the frequency. Just change the sound. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. You got to change the frequency. Change the sound. Change the sound. Shout. 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 Dance. Dance. Change that frequency, Chapula. You gotta change that frequency. Embassy. Hey, 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 Change it, 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 change it. 
just gonna be crazy enough to come right here in the middle with me and we're gonna shift the sound for this morning we're gonna shift the sound shift 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 jump 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 Jump, 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 jump. 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 Jump, jump, Chapula. We're gonna change that sound. High five everybody around you. Tell them we're gonna get a sound mind. We're gonna get a sound mind. High five everybody around you. Tell them we're gonna get a sound mind. We're gonna change the frequency. We're gonna change the frequency. If you believe it, shout it yeah. you in heaven that's why they're saying holy 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 they're going from experience to experience that was not a rehearsed song that they sang holy holy it was a reaction to an experience with God so that was different I never had nothing like that that was different and we're gonna do that throughout all of eternity responding to his majesty And our churches should be filled with experiences with God. 
not the same one that we've been giving them for the last 40 to 50 years. He doesn't even have two snowflakes that look the same. He's always fresh. It could be in a fast song, a slow song, you know, it could be, it doesn't matter as long as he's in it, it's alive. So all of our battles with the external things are futile battles. God can get in anything and make it alive. If you don't like the way we was jumping like that, that's just those jump. If God gets in it, you need to get in it too. I want to be where he is. Or if God's in an old song, get in it. He says, I've come that you might have life. It's about life. And that you might have it more abundantly. We are honored to bring our covering, our apostolic father, who's going to share on something, and it'll be our final encounter for today. Ladies and gentlemen, Bishop Tudor Bismarck. The work is already done, so let's close in prayer. Amen. <laughs> you know, there's things that you can love that impede the flow of God in your life. The love of money is the root of all evil. Love not the world, neither the things of the, that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And so then what we want to do just for a couple of minutes before I share a small word on forensic faith is uh, renounce things that we put above God. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with your whole, your whole, heart. Your whole heart. and your whole. So it's difficult to love God with whole whole mind, whole heart, whole soul, whole strength. But we've got to get as close to that as possible. Amen? Amen. Amen. Put your hands together, everybody. Amen. Pray after me. Say, Heavenly Father, whatever is standing between me and the purity of your love, send a scalpel and cut it off and cause me to be live and direct to the source of your love and life. This we receive in Jesus' name. Teach me, show me how to love you more by teaching me and showing me how to love my brother and sister I see so I can prove I love you when I don't see. Amen, amen. Jesus said to Peter, Jesus said to Peter three times, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these? And gave him an assignment. So when God brings his love into your heart, prepare for your assignment. Say, I'm ready for my assignment. Ready for my assignment. Tell three people, say, be ready for your assignment. For your assignment. Amen, 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 amen. Key of F sharp if you can. I'm thinking of three ways I can pay you, Smith and Bagatti back for what they just did to an old man. For he has done Hallelujah Everybody
Somebody sing, bless the Lord, oh my God. done great things for them then we turned around and said the Lord has done great things for us turn to a few people and say the Lord has done great things for us oh he's done great things he's done great things I said he's done great things for us for he has done Bless your holy name. We bless you, Yahweh. We bless you, Elohim. We bless you, El Shada. We bless you, Jehovah Zikino. Jehovah Kedish, we bless you. Jehovah Rowi, we bless you. We bless Jesus, we bless the name of Jesus. We bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Greetings to Bishop Smith, our presiding bishop, our very able, very able, highly academic, highly intellectual, uh, very organized brother. Amen. God bless you, Bishop Smith. Thank you so much. Amen. You know, if you want to be part of embassy and this conference, you're going to have to be fit, you know. You're going to have to be, all that jumping, you're going to have to be working out somewhere. <laughs> Greetings to our... Bishop Roberts, God bless you, Bishop Roberts, and, your, and Lady D, all the Jabullah leaders, Apostle Sotero Marge, the UK delegation, Bishop French, Beverly French, God bless you, Bishop Memory, how are you, Memory? Amen, good to see you, God bless you, amen. Dr. Scott, it's good to see you. God bless you, Kevin Beavis, amen. Can you put your hands together for a phenomenal team, everybody? <laughs> Come on, show them some love, y'all. Just stay standing. Just a couple of scriptures. Teach, say something, amen. Come on, babe. Come on, come on. Isn't she lovely? Praise the Lord, amen. Um, as I've always said, it's wonderful to be in the presence of the Lord. I just want to say thank you to everybody for being here. Thank you, Bishop Smith, for being so faithful. There's so a few pockets of the move of the Holy Spirit, and this is just a sign of faithfulness and what it can do. Amen. I just want to say uh, to all of you that have come, all of you that are holding ministries, you mustn't give up. God is still doing something. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't lay aside your dreams. Don't stop dreaming. Um, I want to say this. You have to dare to dream. And you've got to stretch your imagination. Because if he has to go and do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask, think, or imagine, we have to have a stretched out imagination. 
We can't, we can't be small in our dreaming and small in our imagination. We have to be big because He is a bigger God. Amen. Hallelujah. And He wants to display His power through you. And you have got to get to a place where you have this in your heart, in your mind. Uh, don't give up. I'm just wanting to encourage you. Don't give up. You've got to press harder, do more. And I, I just want to say this in front of everybody here. I honestly believe embassy is changing from today. That there is going to be such a deep transformation. It's for the region. It's, it's for Detroit, yes. But it's for the whole region. Transformation is coming. Amen. And I want to say to every Jabula pastor that's here, you have got to go deeper, go higher. <laughs> Make sure that you push yourself as far as you can go. And let your whole outer, up, uttermost parts, as the, as the Bible says, just stretch out to reach as many as you can. I am so proud uh, to be part of this service. So proud to be a servant in the kingdom and honestly serving this man. I've known him for 46 years. Can you believe it? <laughs> Hard work, amen, hallelujah. Uh, lots of deep prayer. And I tell you what. <laughs> who would have thought, who would have thought uh, that we could be here doing what we do, amen. In case nobody knows anything about me, I'm very shy. I really am very shy. May the Lord bless you. Amen. <laughs> she used to be very shy. Amen. We met in 1978. She was basically a size zero. She was tiny, tiny, tiny. And uh, we've been together for a long time. This year is 50 years of ministry for me, and we thank God for that. So, God bless you, amen. 1 Corinthians 13, 13, Hebrews 11, 6, Mark chapter number 11, 21. There's always stuff that's abiding now. It's good to see the prices, amen. Where's Tony? You also have just stayed in Jamaica and brought Tony. Now abideth faith, hope, and charity. So these are the things that are always now. Always now is faith. Always now is hope. Always now is love. It's always now. It's the same yesterday, today, forever. It's the same. The greatest of these three is love. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. So faith opens the door to hope, which opens the door to love. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. When you come to God, you must believe that he is. You don't even have to find him. He just blesses you when you diligently seek him. And finally, Jesus said to him, have faith in God. Have the faith of God. This is Jairus, whose daughter was dying and was interrupted by a woman who touched the hem of garment, Jesus' garment. And Jesus said, I say to you that whosoever shall say to any situation, be removed, cast into the sea, won't doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. So that bowling alley, just keep on moving. Come on. We need you now. The Lord has need of you now. Amen. Your resource is always tied where two ways meet. Always two ways meet. The natural way and the spiritual way. And so you have to untie that resource for spiritual use. And so... If you're thinking money, that's the carnal way. Think the resource, God will make sure it happens. Amen? Yeah. Say amen, someone. Yeah. 
And so verse 24, therefore I say to you that what things soever you desire when you pray, whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, plural, them, and you shall have them. Condition, when you stand praying, forgive. Forgive. Turn to three people and say, I forgive you. Just turn to three people and say, I forgive you. 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 Boy, that's a lot of forgiving going on. In Matthew 18, the only, the only sin and violation that will bring all of your sins back into the present is the sin of unforgiveness. If you don't forgive a man who was owed a massive debt by one of his servants, the whole debt was canceled. He went out and found someone who owed him a dollar and threw him in jail for a dollar when he owed a million dollars. And when they told the master, this is what a guy did for a dollar, the man said, everything this man has ever done, bring it back up. And so always walk with forgiveness. And it is tough to forgive people who don't do you right. So forensic faith, very short and very quickly. Faith is a component that is so needful for this era that we're in. It's just very important. Without the kind of faith we need for revival in America, it's impossible to please God. This is a very rare, precious space. And your leader, Bishop Smith, has chosen to have this kind of church with these kinds of encounters for all y'all. <laughs> because just down the road, there are leaders who have chosen not to. And so because he has chosen this, it must be preserved for where God is taking this ministry. And it's going to take people who have the kind of faith to drive it. Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, but I've prayed for you that your faith fail not. Because faith, you're going to lose your hope when you hear I'm crucified. But again, I'm going to test your love by asking you three times after I've been raised from the dead, do you love me? And so it's important then to know that faith is an important component. Second, First Samuel 3 verse 1. And I'm trying to find the offer ramp real quick. And the child Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days and there was no open vision. I've seen cathedrals and churches turned into apartments, supermarkets. There's a place I was in Rochester, they turned that entire church into a gay church. It's painted pink, they got the colors, they're worshiping there, they're singing the songs we're singing, and the, the, the narrative is, well, we're doing the same things you all are doing, and uh, you're saying that we're sinful because of what we do, but in your heart you have hate, unforgiveness, uh, you have in your heart bitterness, anger, the fruit of the, uh, the works of the flesh, 519 of Galatians, so what's the difference? And so what we're seeing now is that the word of the Lord in the earth is precious, it's scarce. Very precious, very scarce. And I can't reiterate more how incredible and unique what you are experiencing here. Please preserve it. Turn to your neighbor and say, we've got to preserve this. We've got to preserve this. We've got to preserve this. And so Hannah starts the movement because of her lack. She can't have children. And Paniah is having children. And so her lack pushes her into a place of deep intercessory prayer and worship and glossolalia, 
which is speaking in the language of the spirit, I like that word frequency, which she changes her frequency in prayer and taps into the frequency of faith. And once she gets into the currency of heaven, which is faith, there's things that money can't buy, MasterCard can't even get it for you. It's the frequency of faith. Once you get into the frequency of faith, nothing is impossible. Absolutely nothing is impossible. So Samuel is raised by God. Uh, Hannah gives him to Eli, and God is going to prove that an illicit, uh, lascivious, lecherous environment cannot taint pure faith. A three-year-old is put into a house with a 99-year-old obese man, which means he has no control. He's blind, which means he has no vision, no intentions to have vision. He neglects uh, to correct his sons, Phineas and Hophni, who are abusing the people, their offerings, abusing men's wives, their daughters, uh, totally uh, unconsecrated. And this pure little boy, at the age of three, is put into that environment. Which means that if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, and you plant that grain of mustard seed in the midst of rubbish, that thing will grow to the point where the birds of the air will lodge under its branches. And so Samuel was told, I'm putting you in here in a vision that God called his name three times, Samuel, 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 Samuel once for the courtyard, once for the holy place, once for the holiest of holies, to cover him in all areas, and then gave him a national word and told him what was here to come. And the Bible says that Samuel's word never fell to the ground. Say after me. Say my words will not fall to the ground. So the ground means the cursed place. My words will not fall to the cursed place. Whatever curses they were, whatever curses abide, whatever Satan has cursed uh, Detroit, uh, Wade County, whatever county you're in, whatever curse has been pronounced there, the words you spoke out of your spirit today in this environment, we declare that that word will not fall into the cursed place. And if you just happen to be a witch here that's been assigned to curse this place, your words are destroyed, our words overrule yours. And if you happen to be a witch here and you spoke in your own language to curse the person next to you, seven times more is coming on you. And if you don't repent, your family will die. Six weeks, members of your family will die because you're trying to touch that which is pure by bringing that which is accursed. I need a strong amen. I need a strong amen. Including the witch, say amen. Amen. <laughs> So Samuel starts the school of prophets and his school is Genesis 1 verse 11. Everything produces after its kind. Everything produces after its kind. So you have to ask yourself in your church service, in the way you live, in the way you conduct business, in the way you raise your family, is this the kind I want to be reproduced? And so I was frantically taking notes. Uh, we changed our service configuration late last year based on what you're doing here. We added some things to New Life Covenant Church, lengthened the praise and worship, open time for altar, and it's changed New Life Covenant Church just for forever. Because every moment, every moment, everything for me is a teaching and learning opportunity. And you'd be a fool not to learn from something. And our church is better off for it. Are, are you tracking with me? And so the thing is that with Samuel now, because his words won't fall to the ground, he's going to start a system of the schools of the prophets, four of them, with 50 young prophets hand-picked where Samuel began to teach them. He taught them. And their school was this kind of prophetic gift 
your words will not fall to the ground. If it comes out of your mouth, it will not fall to the ground. So we fast forward now to 17.1 of 1 Kings. Elijah the Tishbite came out of Samuel's school and he said, by my word, not thus saith the Lord, by my word there will be no rain for three and a half years. What he learned in his daddy's school was imparted into his life. But even though he shut the heavens, went to Cherith for nine months. Nine is the number of birthing because he was about to birth a system. The birds of the air which carry food, pick up food along the wayside, seed is sown along the way. The birds of the air picked up what was on the wayside and fed the man of God for nine months. When the umbilical cord dried up, that's the brook Cherith, he was now birthed into a system and that system was a supply chain with the widow of Zarephath. Not a covenant girl, a widow of Zarephath. She had running water and two sticks and flour to make a, a loaf of bread. That's all he needed. A stream of living water, components for the fire of God, which was going to be called down from the Mount of Carmel and revelation knowledge, the bread she was going to make. And so he spent two and a half years with this lady. Her son died. Turn to your neighbor and say, her son died. <laughs> and Elijah said, why did you bring me to this house and cause me to bring such evil there? The death of the boy was a gift for the prophet. The death of the boy was a gift for the prophet. Because if you have a little boy and a big old man, who's the... Where's Bishop uh, Dawson? Stand up. That's a big man right there. I want to, wouldn't want to meet you with a football in my hand trying to get a touchdown. <laughs> now imagine a little boy, uh, one of Christian's little boys. The Bible says the prophet stretched himself on the boy. What did the boy do? He was causing forensic faith to develop. He needed to be stretched because he was going to face Jezebel and false prophets. You can't face that on faith that you come from. And so when the boy died, it became a gift to the prophet and the boy stretched him. And when he was stretched, he was now ready for Mount Carmel. The trial you are in the test you are experiencing, the lack you are walking through, the famine that's on your life is stretching you for what God has for you. That next level cannot have lower level faith. You've got to have higher level faith because you're going to need it for what's on that place. Shout stretch my faith. Shout stretch my faith. And so if you read the chapter of heroes in 11 of Hebrews, Every single individual had an occurrence that was forensic faith that stretched them to where they were going. So memory, no stressing, no strokes, no fever, no rash, no losing your hair. It's all forensic faith. And so when Bernstein was born and we were told after four months he had a condition, a congenital heart condition with no pulmonary artery, and when he had surgery we were told that this child wouldn't live long because when Professor Kingsley opened him, his heart was the size of my thumb and they discovered they had no, he had no pulmonary artery and they told us he won't live towards the end of the year and then he won't live to eight. But I'll tell you what, God used that child's horrible condition to stretch our faith to the kinds of things we now see in our lives. Shout stretch your faith. Shout stretch your faith. God will stretch your faith. If there's anything you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. But in that believing process, God is going to stretch your faith. And being stretched is never a pleasant thing. Uh, turn to a neighbor and say, don't forsake me. 
when I'm being stretched. Sisters and brothers, when you are being stretched, people leave you on your own. When you get into a building program and you are needing to be stretched, the rats leave first. When you are going to the next level of performance, amen, the betrayers sell you out first. Judas sold Jesus. He sold the author of faith for something that was menial. In the next season for every one of you, God's going to stretch your faith and forensic faith is going to cause the high places to be made low and low places to be brought high. Crooked places to be made straight and straight places to take you to another level. In forensic faith, uh, things you only dreamed about are coming your way. Uh, what you thought was a dream and what you believed was a myth, uh, you will handle it and, and you will touch it and you will feel it. Uh, give a neighbor a high five and say, believe. All things are possible. If it's a thing, it's possible. It's within reach. If you can believe it, it can go home with you. If you can believe it, you can possess it. The Lord said to Sarah, Is there anything too hard for the Lord? I said, There's nothing too hard for the Lord. If you can believe it, it's not too hard. He said to Jeremiah, try me now. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. Shout, it's not too hard. Shout, it's not too hard. I'm stepping into my destiny. I'm stepping into my future. I'm stepping into my breakthrough. I'm stepping into my wedding. I'm stepping into my new house. I'm stepping into spiritual gifts. I'm stepping into miracles, signs and wonders. Lord help my unbelief. I believe that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ask or ever think. All I got to do, all I got to do is think about it and here it comes. It's on its way. It's coming to me. I possess my possession. I take what's mine. By the grace of God, my faith will fight for me. If you're going to fight, fight the good fight of faith. Your faith is about to fight for you. Your faith is about to reward you. Your faith is about to open doors for you. Your faith, your faith will break down the enemy's camp. Give God a praise, somebody. Say yeah. God made a way. God made a way. The Red Sea can't stop you. The rock will bring water. The wilderness will feed you. Jericho will open. Walls will fall down. God made a way. God made a way. God made a way. I need, I need, I need two more minutes. In 82, <laughs> we got married in 1982. We're supposed to get married on the 31st of October, 81. Apostle Control, my sister Marion, burnt with fire survived three weeks in excruciating pain and died. And when Marion died, my mother changed forever. 
because a part of my mother was buried with Marion. And when she actually died in 21, her request was to be buried in Marion's grave, to be united with her daughter. It was very painful. So we got married in 82. My dad gave us a gift. It's all he had. He didn't have enough money. Chichi's family, Chichi paid for the wedding. And uh, we uh, put some money together. She had most of the money for our house, number three, Gibbons Hillside. They wanted $21,000 for the house. The down payment was 6,000, and then we would pay off the deed in the owner's name. And then when we, if we, raise the rest of the money, we could then pay the rest, and they could change the deed into our name. So they were kind enough to leave a bar, their bar there. Of course, they took the drinks, but they left the bar. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we bought the house in Mount Pleasant, they, they left the bar. Well, I'm not sorry was with the bar. And then we bought the house in, in Rua. They also left the bar. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure what the Lord was saying. <laughs> but we, we cooked. We, we didn't get into debt. So we cook and sit on the step and eat. It was such a romantic thing, but we had no car. Someone say forensic faith. Forensic the car my dad gave us was bashed on the driver's side. We drive on the right. Uh, the right side is the steering wheel. So it was bashed all there. The doors could not open. And so to get out of the car, it was either go through the window or get out on the passenger side. And this car was notorious for breaking down in public <laughs> where Chi-Chi's friends were. <laughs> and many of them were trying to discourage her from marrying this guy playing guitar with a bit of an afro who had no money. But when we signed that register, as we were signing the register, Chi-Chi was glowing, happy to get a man, amen. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to pay for that? Am I going to pay for that? She was just glowing, happened to get a man in the church. Amen. Yeah. So I was standing off watching her sign the register. And I said to myself, what the H-E double toothpicks have you just done? You've taken somebody's daughter. You have no money. I had $37 to my name. My sister bought me a pair of shoes. The best man bought me my tuxedo. I borrowed my shirt from Salwood Levendale. I had zero money. And I was so moved, but there was something inside so strong. And when I held her hand, uh, I was so mad at the Lord that day, by the way, because it rained and rained and rained. We had to take all our pictures inside. But I held her hand, Apostle. And I said, baby, I, I know it. If you'll stay with me, I'm going to take you around the world. I said to her, I'll kiss you on the top of the Eiffel Tower. I'll kiss you on Tower Bridge in London. I'm taking you. No car. We began to practice what I call forensic faith. There was a garage provision for a car, but there was no car. And so we found four stones and put four stones where the car was anticipated to park. And every day we'd come home with that bashed up old banger and we'd walk around those stones and see ourselves sitting in that car. And I'd say to Chi Chi, I'll drive, you just sit on the passenger side. And as I get out of the car, I would come and open the door for her and we'd close the door. We did that every morning and we did that every night. 
our neighbors saw us doing that and they said are you guys okay because this kind of faith doesn't make sense when you're telling people who are having children 318 born in your house that don't have a promise and you're telling them I'm the father of many nations I'm going to have a son and your wife looks so wrinkled everything has gone south and she's also confessing I'm going to have a son one year goes by I'm going to have a son it's called forensic faith and the Bible says that God came one day out of the mirage of the desert turn to your neighbor say he's going to show up he's shown up going to show up he comes with two great emissaries Michael and Gabe and when God comes with Mike and Gabe you know something bad is about to happen and Abraham is watching and waiting for God they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength I feel forensic faith coming in the room now the devil said you'll never have a baby look how old you are the devil said you'll never have a baby look how dried up you are the devil said you'll never have a baby look how they laughing at you uh, one of your soldiers has had another son but Abraham staggered not at the promise of God but was strong in faith uh, we walked around those stones seeing ourselves driving that car turn to your neighbor say it will come to pass it's not too hard uh, keep on confessing it keep on believing it keep on saying it keep on trusting find someone that's crazy enough to agree with you if two of you shall agree on earth as touching any one thing it shall happen for you if it's a thing uh, you can agree on it uh, it's coming sisters and brothers we walked around those stones driving that car it's forensic faith uh, that car was waiting for us it was waiting for our faith to get there the Lord said to Sarah baby girl next year at the time of life you shall embrace a son when I get back you're gonna have a son and Sarah laughed and God said don't laugh because there's nothing too hard and in that year God stepped into Sarah's life took a 90 year old woman and made her 34 24 34 gave her a feeding machine that would knock out a Naomi Campbell amen all the tools needed for the gift on the way were given to Sarah shuffling mama became hopscotch baby sleeping early mama was alive all night long Lyle and Richie two old people playing games in the middle of the night because they believe that God was true to his promise when God says something you have to believe but you're going to have to do your part so Abraham and Sarah God gave a promise get busy to fulfill that promise turn to your neighbor say drive around the neighborhood look for the building look for the furniture look for the lounge suite find the cameras find the street lights find the parking lot 
buy a new suburban get some buses uh, talk to the mayor speak to the councillor Isaac is on the way shout three times I believe shout another time I believe I believe God is coming through I believe God is making a way next year this time you won't recognize me you saw me last year I was old and wrinkled and dying but look what the Lord has done who's bad now Michael <laughs> who's bad now look what the Lord has done look what the Lord has done look what the Lord has done he has done great things for me the heathen will be surprised to see what God can actually do God did it to God be the glory God be the glory for the things he has done give him a praise yeah Give him a praise for the things he has done. How can I say thanks for the things he has done for me? Things so undeserved, yet he did it all to prove his love to me. The voices of a million angels cannot express my gratitude all that I am and ever hope to be I owe it all to thee to God be the glory for the things he has done to God be the glory for the things he has done tell three people he has done great things he is doing great things Lord I believe Lord I believe Lord I believe Lord I believe I said Lord I believe 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 I believe I said Lord I believe Lord I believe 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 is moving in the room yeah God made a way yeah 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 go get your money Go get your healing. Go get your breakthrough. Yeah, 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 yeah. God made a way. God made a way.
Argentina and Chile. Argentina and Chile. Woo. God made it away. God made it away. God made a way. 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 South American delegation. Are you responsible for that bunch as well? Come, come, come. The thing that we have been believing God for, Bishop Smith, is something that has, uh, it's, it's, it's a puzzle. It's, it's a puzzle. I, I spoke to Bill Winston about it. I said, we're growing in so many countries. Our church is growing. But somehow, I think you had a word. We haven't actually found the frequency, the money frequency. And I kind of like feel like this bowling alley deal. It could have been a hospital. It could have been any other building. And I was thinking, why that? It's because you're about to strike all the pins. Because I've only went bowling once with Kevin somewhere in Streatham, him and Stephen Gardner. And so I, I would hit a couple of the pins, sometimes miss the whole thing, you know. Uh, but I was asking the Lord, why a bowling alley? He said, because there's a number of pins that New Life, Jabola New Life Ministries International has not struck. That is buildings, land, and money. And this building is the breakthrough for all of us. <laughs> Including our beloved family from Argentina and from San Diego in Chile. Amen. And so we now bless you. Does she understand me? Please. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Amen. We now bless you. We bless you with long life. We bless you with great strength. We bless you with apostolic anointing and gifting. What God put on Steve, what God put on Philip in Acts chapter number eight, God put on you for San Diego, Chile 
for Buenos Aires, right? Who's from Buenos Aires? Yeah, yeah, Argentina. Yeah, yeah, Lionel Messi. I don't like him. <laughs> God put that anointing on your life and stretch your capacity. Please listen to me. What you love will grow. Whatever you love grows. Some people love an illicit life. It keeps on growing. But love those people and watch God open doors for you, for buildings, for land, for favor. What was on men like Anacondia and the generation of the 80s, the greats, is coming to sit on you and multiply in your life. God bless you mightily. Apostle, Apostle Ivan, Ivan the Great. Father, bless Ivan. Bless him, let the sickness dissipate. Let it move. Everything that is imparted here, transfer it there. We say the word and we send it to San Diego. We send it. Bless Carlos. Bless Carlos. Muchas, 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 muchas. Bless Carlos mightily. Open doors that no man can shut. And let a multi generational ministry spin off. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, bless Bishop Smith, Bishop Roberts, Bishop O'Neill, Bishop Cottrell. Apostle, come, come stand with me. Come, Apostle, come. Amen. It won't hurt to come with you, honey. Amen. Apostle Scott, Dr. Scott, come. Bishop French, Bishop Memory. Amen. Any of the other executive leaders? For Jabullah that I hear that I missed. What about that honey um, that does all your emails? The honey that does all your emails. Amen. Yes, Lord. 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 Sing it again, yes, Lord. Yes, I love you, Lord.
Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This prayer will never be prayed ever again. This for Jabula is my jubilee blessing prayer. 50 years of ministry. This prayer will never ever be prayed ever again by anybody, not even by myself. Prophet Mary, come kneel here with us. Amen. You've been with us since Noah built the ark. Come, amen. Father, the ridiculous, crazy, unfathomable, unsearchable grace you have given me for these 50 years, for doors that have opened that I still can't understand, for platforms of preaching to millions of people, to little rooms with seven people, that kind of grace of revelation, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and great favor, Chichi and I freely, freely, freely give. Freely. We give it. The works that we have done, greater works, shall the men and women here do greater works. Whatever they ask in your name, it shall be done. Let a double portion like Elisha receive from Elijah. Let the men and the women receive ten times more. For this man who has willingly, willingly, freely, with no gall, no descent, no jealousy, freely given his life, the years of his strength, his best years, his best years given to this ministry, given to Chichi and I. Give this man all that I have and all that I possess. Don't leave a drop. Give it all, all, all. On his amazing life partner, where's Cheech? On his amazing life partner. Give them all we have. All. We withhold nothing. There's nothing that I have that I withhold from you, Daniel Smith. And the amazing lethal weapon. Give it all. all. Create bigger platforms greater relationships, greater anointing, grant him the grace for miracles, signs, wonders, the dead being raised, millions of dollars, relationships with individuals like Elon Musk and more, Bill Gates, Warry, Warren Buffett. Father, give him a treasure trove of unfathomable blessing. Take him deeper than his deepest dreams and desires, higher than his highest aspirations, wider and longer than he planned in his own strategic life. 
bless his wonderful family. Bless his wonderful family. Bless Jamal Christian and the boys. Amir, Joss and the boys. Bless Bethany. I pray a special blessing on her fiance. Father, let them see their generations. Bless Dr. Scott. Thank you for the work that she's, Dr. Bishop Cottrell. Thank you for the work that she's done. Thank you for the great James Cottrell. Thank you for the amazing, resourceful Claudette Scott. Kind, loving, humble, giving. Bless memory tap for money. Bless Rue. Bless the boys. Keep Shelton. Keep this man from all harm. Shelter him in every way. Bless Beverly and Charles French. Cause them to walk in wonderful grace. Bless their church. May Liverpool win many games for us in Jesus' name. Bless him mightily in Jesus' name. Bless the big man, Bishop Dawson. Open Jamestown. Open the Tri-Cities in a significant way. Let the prophetic gift rise in you even stronger and mightily. Stronger and mightily. Write the words and make them plain. Write a book of prophecies. Bless the O'Neills. This man has given so much and has not wanted anything in return. Bless the O'Neills. Thank you for long life, strength, blessing, prosperity, limitless resource. Buildings upon buildings. Bless the new church. Bless the pastor there. Bishop, God bless you. Remind me of your name. Bless Bishop Hassel in the name of Jesus. My brother. It's my brother. Bless my baby brother. Bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh been through so much. Thank you for extending him the gift of kindness. Bless Bishop Roberts and Lady D in every way. Bless the wise man. Bless the wise man. In this his 80th year, bless the wise man. Let wisdom increase more and more. Let him dispense wisdom on a scale he's never done before. Bless the coals. Bless David and Mary Cole. Bless their boys and their girls, their grandchildren. Prophesy. 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 Increase her rank. Shara, prophesy. Woshata. Rambarabasanda. Bless our sisters from South America. Bless the glorious march. Apostle Sotero. I'm going to end with Bishop Smith, but just look at me right here, Apostle, right here. For, for, for certain things that God has, certain treasures, God loves everybody. God even loves a fool. But God doesn't trust everybody. And God doesn't trust everybody with everything. God is going to trust you with some of the most unique miracles. And you are going to have to, have to walk very humbly before the Lord. Because any dot of credit you assign to yourself, you're going all the way down to start all over again. Say after me, Heavenly Father, by your grace, I am willing and I'm open for you to trust me with extraordinary gifts and miracles. I give you the glory. Thank you for opening the world to me. Send me to unique places. Help me to be stealth. 
to come in and go out. Bless my family. Bless my family. Keep them safe. Keep them safe. Keep them safe. Special angels on assignment are being released in your life to protect you in all your ways. He has given his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Now bless our presiding bishop. Cause him to lead. Cause him to lead. Let the anointing of Melchizedek sit on this man. Everybody standing. Thank you for your kindness. Chichi, say what? Do you want to say what? Amen. Thank you so much for receiving us, Bishop. as a team to come back for our dismiss. This is the conclusion of our time together. Um, Bishop Bismarck, Pastor Chi Chi has been in our lives since we met him in 1998. Officially started working with him in 2000. And um, they have been stellar in our life constant, consistent. Uh, he taught us what covenant looks like. That's why we named this church Covenant Church. That's why we stress covenant relationship because he and Pastor Chi Chi has modeled that over the years and I saw the power of it. That's the reason I really wanted to be with Jabula. It wasn't because of ministry per se, it was relationship. A lot of people do ministry, but very few people connect and share life. And I've had the privilege of being with them at their high moments and some of their painful moments. And this is how you do life together. And I've seen him in, under all kinds of situations. And I've watched him model how to handle adversity. And those things are transferred. Um, what I'm trying to say is uh, they're authentic people um, and we've been privileged to be a part of their life for so long. Let's thank God for the Bismarcks. And you know, we owe them some love. That's really what this is about. It's about, you know, I want you to pay some of your love debts. You know, just start paying these debts of love to people because we owe a whole lot of people love. And we would like that to become a part of our vocabulary around here, you know. You need to go pay some love. Um, I think we're going to see God do incredible things when we think like that. Um, look at somebody and say, I owe you love. Yeah, yeah. Then look back and say, well, pay up then. Come on, I'm going to pay me then. Don't just tell me about it. Give me some love. <laughs> Amen. Well, I'm going to ask everybody to stand. This is it. You know, it's been an incredible uh, few days together. And amen. We thank God for this great music team. You know, we're, they do an extraordinary job every Sunday, every week. Apostle Pagani is going to be with us on tomorrow. He's going to be ministering. So make sure you be in the house on tomorrow. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, team. Take us out. <laughs>